Hello, welcome to another uh, video. Today we are going to talk through what you need when you're out and about in a cake room. Okay, number one may seem a bit obvious to most people. It's the doors. You can take the doors on and off. Um, I generally run with the doors because uh, it reduces wind buffeting, but you don't have to. I have run without them occasionally. Um, I get a new hairstyle every time. So for those who don't know, wind buffeting is where the uh, wind gets into the cabin, swirls around and messes up your hair. On a catering, the doors are removable very, very easily. There's two hinges uh, on the side of the screen here. You simply pull the door in and out, or you would if you had any strength or coordination. On a catering, you can remove the doors very, very easily. There are just two pins that drop into hinges on the side of the windscreen. Like, of course it's not going to play ball today. <laughs> like so. Oh my, we don't have a door. There we go. So, um, actually another interesting thing, or interesting if you're very sad like me, is I've had these mirror mounts 3D printed. Um, they're obviously plastic now rather than metal. It helps to stabilize the uh, mirror mounting point so you don't get this vibration, which I often used to get with the standard mirrors. Downside is the pins are not perfectly in line. That's because they were um, installed by somebody with um, less than a full toolkit, if you catch my meaning. Number two, the second thing I take with me when I'm driving is my steering wheel. However, I will, if I go for fish and chips or I stop somewhere, disconnect the steering wheel, put it in my backpack and go. Wow. Pops back on to the boss very easily. Main thing is you've got to check the steering wheel's actually connected, clicked into place because the last thing you want is to start driving and the wheel's loose. Ask me how I know. The reason I take the steering wheel um, is because if anybody walks past who knows anything about the catering, um, they could get themselves a free steering wheel as easily as, but gone. These steering wheels are about 200 quid um, new, so it's easy money. So back to the topic of wind buffeting, obviously with a convertible car, especially one that's not really been designed with to reduce wind buffeting in mind. There's a company called Soft Bits for Sevens that makes, as they say in the tin, Soft Bits for Sevens. Um, and this is one of their products. It slips over the headrest on either side and it creates this lovely bit of netting in between. That reduces the buffeting in the cabin so I can walk out um, after a nice long drive with perfectly coiffured hair. What I also have is a nice little pocket in the middle here. Um, and this is where I'll keep bits and bobs, phone, um, any chargers laptop etc it's a really useful bit of kit it doesn't come with me when i leave the car it stays on uh, because if somebody really wants that they're having it anyway um, but the harnesses run through the uh run through the product so actually it's a hell of a lot of work to get it out of there and somebody would be seen nicking that long before they got away with it so i don't worry about that to be honest with you i don't worry about much because if somebody's really going to want to nick this car they're not getting anywhere unseen or unheard to be clear though, I do empty this pocket every time I leave the car because it is on show. So for the particularly brave uh, Sevener, um, some leave their windscreens at home and they go with uh, with an aero screen only, which is a chopped down uh, either piece of Perspex, carbon fibre or plastic that runs across the bottom. Um, I haven't been brave enough to do this yet. Um, I quite like having my face arranged as it is, rather than being rearranged by cow pat stones or any other flying objects. Um, I think it could be quite a fun way of doing things as long as you've got the right protection, so ballistic glasses, goggles or helmet. Um, yeah, maybe that's one to look at in the future, but for me, I always go with a screen at the moment. Bonus, it's a heated windscreen, um, so it demists in the morning very, very quickly. So if you want to get out for those early starts, um, don't worry about condensation. Whack the heated screen on, boff, you're away. Okay, so the other thing I do always take is the roof. Um, so, a bit of a controversial one. I actually quite like the standard fit Caterham roof. I bought a second-hand roof uh, a hood bag as they're called here. It's got a zip on either side. You roll the roof up, put it in, and it straps nicely to the roll bar. It's on top of the boot space itself, so you're not actually losing any luggage space. Um, and if you want to, you can strap an extra bag 
on top here. Um, it's not really in the way. And if you wanted to slide another bag underneath it, you could, and just simply roll this further up the, uh, or attach this further up the roll bar. You've got a bit, bit of space to play with. Um, I actually think the standard catering roof is, is pretty good. I can, I reckon I can get it on in, in about two minutes and off in about the same amount of time. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy. There are lots of aftermarket options in terms of half hoods, etc. I haven't really felt the need. Um, I drove down to Le Mans in France last year for a week. Didn't didn't get the hood out of the bag once. When it rains, you just drive a bit faster and pull your pull your hat down a bit lower. Okay, so in my boot, I carry at least two dry bags. So those are fully waterproof bags. No way any water's getting in there. So that keeps what I'm carrying um, nice and nice and moisture free. Um, more importantly, I keep a couple of spares in here. So I've got a spare. Uh, what is this? This throttle cable. Yeah, I've got a spare throttle cable because the last thing you want is for that to snap uh, and you'll be stranded when it's actually an easy fix. I also keep a spare clutch cable on me because these are a known weak point um, on these cars. And again, you don't want to be stuck just because you don't have one of these in the back of your car. So yeah, spare clutch and throttle cable get you going again in any scenario. So let's have a look at what's in these dry bags then. It'll be a surprise to me because I haven't actually looked in here for quite a while. Okay, number one, bit of a strange one. I actually carry a spare ECU with me. Um, that's because uh, in a previous uh, set of trips, um, I was having difficulty with the car starting. The ECU wasn't behaving particularly well. So I got a second hand one online and a very helpful forum member, Caterham Lot 7 Club member, um, coded it all up for me. So it's really nice to have a spare. You never know, the ECU that's in the car is 21 years old, could get corrupted at some point, bit of water gets in there, or or we just have some sort of software issue. Um, so I like to have a second one on hand, it's all coded up, ready to go in the car. For those that don't know, an ECU is the uh, is um, the, basically the electronic brain of the car. It coordinates um, inputs from a load of sensors, and then sends a load of outputs out to the car. Um, allowing it to run properly, um, adjusting things like fuel air ratio, etc., to basically get the car to burn petrol as cleanly and efficiently as possible. Uh, to be clear, um, we just googled it because I didn't actually know what ECU stood for. It's engine control unit. Um, in case you're interested, you're watching this video, so you'll definitely be interested in sad details like that. Okay, so the next thing I carry is this weird-looking device here. This is um, a throttle position sensor. So again, this goes back to the early days when I had the car. I had a bit of jerkiness um, and I had a bit of um, rough running. So what this does is it measures how far you've pressed the throttle pedal um, and it allows the ECU here. Um, it provides input to the ECU and allows it you know, to work out whether or not it's running the right amount of fuel and air mixture, etc. to give you a really clean clean burn so you're telling the ECU something via this sensor um, I have had issues with them in the past so I keep one in the car very cheap from a breakers yard or something similar fit on loads of loads of cars and from loads of MG rovers etc okay the next thing I carry is um, this rather odd looking device it actually fits um, in a similar position on the engine on the uh, throttle body um, quite close to the throttle position sensor. Again, it was related to that similar issue. I changed this a few years ago as well, so I carry a spare just to be sure. It's an idle air control valve. It opens and closes when the car is at idle because it'll need a little bit more air when it's at idle um, than it will when you're moving and you've got airflow through the engine, etc. So uh, again, I just carry it just in case. Okay, so the next one's a bit of a weird one. You may think, what is all this? Why are you carrying around rubbish? Um, you're half right. This is the cap for the coolant expansion tank. Um, again, I have had issues with my car running a little bit hot. In the end, it wasn't the expansion cap, but I bought a new one and put it on. Uh, so I've got this one spare now, the, the one that came originally with the car. I carry it because these have been known to leak in the past. Obviously, the plastic gets old, it warps, there's a rubber ring in there that can that can uh, weather over time, etc. So again, the last thing you want is to be stranded on the side of the road with an overheating car or a car that's got you know temperature going up and down because you don't have a plastic cap. So, yeah, again, this is in the bag. It comes with me everywhere. 
Okay, the last two things in my orange bag are a, uh, a flathead screwdriver, or as I called it in a previous video, a spanner. Um, absolute genius. Um, and a, a ratchet. Um, it's currently got a socket on it, but I've got a set of sockets um, that I carry with me as well. So yeah, big ratchet. You never know when you'll need to tighten something, take something off, etc. So again, just really handy to have out and about. Okay, so on to the uh, blue bag. Again, this is all overkill. To be honest with you, you can go out without any of this. You'll probably be absolutely fine. But given I had issues at the start, I'm now uh, a bit over the top. Um, anyway, the next thing I carry is a multimeter. So this tool allows you to... Um, uh, what does it allow you to do? Right, it allows you to measure electrical current. It allows you to test electrical components for whether they're conducting electricity. And again, it's just something that's really helpful to have. If you're having some electrical issues with the car, you can start to work backwards and isolate where those issues are. And you can test components to see whether or not they're actually um, conducting electricity all the way through them um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, I've used it a fair bit on this car and on other cars. I am by no means very good with it. I generally get it wrong. I put it on the wrong setting pretty much every time. I have to Google which setting to put it on every time I get it out of the back. Um, so it takes me about five attempts to get any sort of reading from it, mainly because I'm completely uneducated in the ways of electricity and how to measure it. Okay, so the next little bag, again, is probably overkill, but again, I've been in this situation, so I'd rather have the bits. So rubber pipe, rubber hose, coolant hose. Um, I've had coolant hose um, leak and I've had coolant hose uh, perish, so I like to keep a little bit of, of um, length here. I also keep, um, perhaps I won't be able to reach it, but I also keep, believe it or not, um, about two feet of, of coolant hose in the back of the car there. That was um, on a trip down to Le Mans. The week before I had cooling issues and it was to do with the, the heater matrix I showed you in a previous video but initially I thought it was to do with piping so I bought a load of length and stuck it in the car just to be sure and I knew no matter what happened I had spare and I could fix the issue. So yeah again over the top but you may want it. Okay so similar to the pipe that I talked about earlier I also carry a couple of spare Jubilee clips um, obviously on a bit of pipe at the moment and a, a connector that fits the the piping that I've got so this allow me to connect this plastic piece here will allow me to connect uh, two lengths of piping together so if I have a break in the pipe for whatever reason I can essentially splice in another piece related to the um, uh, the the piping is I keep some rubber bungs with me so again if you have a leak at the end of a pipe or you've got um, you've got something that's flowing it's really nice to be able to stop that flow and bung it up um, so I've used this for instance when my heater matrix uh, I needed to cut that out of the circuit I just plugged the ends of the heater matrix uh, piping with these rubber bungs I didn't have coolant flying everywhere as I bypassed the system so yeah it just got me back on my way pretty quickly and without making too much of a mess I think these are about a quid on eBay something like that um, if anyone's interested, they're size 13 and they fit perfectly into the heater matrix piping. And I think that's 13 mil, by the way, not just some magic unit. Next thing I carry is some ludicrously neon uh, gloves to work with. I mean, I have no idea why I've got that colour glove. It's probably from the time I went go-karting and these were, uh, these were <laughs> what you got for free with the go-karting. Um, but yeah, I don't want oil and rubbish on my hands um, when I'm out and about, so if I need to do anything on the go, wear the gloves, keeps me nice and clean. Simple. So all in one big bunch then, I take quite a lot of additional tools with me. Um, so I've got a number of uh, screwdrivers, varying sizes and heads, etc. I've got a full so uh, set of um, hex, hex keys, full set of Allen keys. Okay, final two items. One is a little bit of lock thread or Loctite. Um, that'll help me if I ever have to get a, a bolt, uh, a screw back into place and I really, really don't want it to come loose through vibration or movement. I like to have this with me so I know I'm safe and that screw or bolt will never move again.
A last item is paired with one other that I actually don't have with me at the moment. So this is PTFE tape or plumber's tape, Somebody, some people might know it as. So this um, goes into joins or into seals, um, such as where you're screwing a sensor into the coolant rail, for instance. And what this does is it goes between the two metal fixings, so between a thread, um, and it blocks any any uh, route for the liquid to escape so you just wrap this round and round and round and round the thread and then you screw it in um, and you won't get any any water or or liquid leakage whatsoever similarly i carry a small roll of electrical tape as well currently that's outside in a different car that really really is having issues um, but that that also lives in this bag um, and again i use electrical tape to insulate any live wires um, or frayed wires or anywhere where I've got exposed metal that could potentially short. Uh, final thing I'll show you is that I tend to always travel with the Caterham tonneau cover in the car along with the roof that's in the roof back. I keep it behind the passenger seat again because this is an SV. I have, a, I have a fair bit of storage behind there. The reason I do this is because if I'm ever out and I have to leave the car, it's nice to be able to cover the passenger compartment without putting the whole roof on. Particularly on a hot day, um, or you have to leave the car on a street or in a car park, and you don't really want people potentially taking liberties and sticking their arm in or trying to sit in the car when you're not around. I tend to fasten this and cover up the entire um, cabin of the car. I'm not gonna put all the poppers on, but basically the way this attaches is with poppers. Um, I think it's stopped. The screen's gone off. That's fine, it's still recording. Oh, the screen sorry. just goes off. <laughs> I didn't know that. I just fucking know that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm putting just that. Just carry on. I was trying not to keep you, I was trying not to have no, your face in there. No, it's You're just going to cut that here. No, I won't cut it, it's fine. He, voila. Sort of. I've been a bit lazy, I haven't done all the poppers. But you get the idea. The car is nice and secure. Nobody can see my steering wheel. Um, and nobody's tempted to go and have a sit in something when they maybe shouldn't. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what somebody who is way over the top takes with them when they go out for a drive. Um, most normal people probably would just take their wallet, their keys and their phone. Um, so yeah, take everything I've said um, in that spirit and happy motoring. Okay, I'm being pushed relentlessly by my friend and lighting director here to say please like and subscribe. I really don't want to do that, so um, do what you want. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Bye.